So the production possibilities frontier. The production possibilities frontier is going to be a graph that shows combinations of output that an economy could produce. In a very simple form, we're going to have two goods. So let's say I have, here I'll just talk about good X and good Y. And my PPF will see could have different shapes. It could be outwards, straight line, or inwards. Let's just draw it as a straight line for this. So this PPF shows what are my production possibilities. So if I want to produce more of Y or if I want to produce any Y when I was only produced good, uh, good X, I need to give up in production of the other good. The reason for that being is that if all your population is working at producing one of the two goods, if you ask them to produce the other one, well, you'll have to take some workers away from that production and move on to the other one. So we're just going to go through a small example here of uh, what can happen. So here's a situation that we could have shirts versus potatoes. And I'm just going to draw this out very quickly. It doesn't matter whether I put potatoes up on the x-axis or on the y-axis. Um, but just for the sake of it, we're just going to put potatoes down here and shirts up here. The maximum amount of shirts I could produce is a thousand. Maximum amount of potatoes is 20. Okay. Uh, if I produce a thousand shirts, I have no potatoes. If I produce 20, uh, oops, the maximum amount of potatoes is not 20, it's a hundred. If I produce a hundred potatoes, then I get no shirts. So let's go for increments of 20. So 20, 40, 60, and over here it's going to be 80 will be my situations here. So with 20 pounds of potatoes, I will get 950 shirts. For 40, I'm going to have a bigger drop, 850 shirts. Let's say 850. With 60, 700 shirts. And with 80... I'm going to have 400 shirts and then it drops down to zero. So I'm going to have something that looks a little bit bowed up towards the outside. So a little bit kind of this shape that goes like this. Okay. So what's the actual opportunity cost if we were to calculate it? Well, for every extra 20 pounds of potatoes, I have this situation where here I give up 20 units uh, for 20 pounds of potatoes. I give up 50 shirts. So that's how many I lose. I lose 50 here. I'll lose a hundred here. I'll lose 150 here. I'll lose 300 and over here. I will lose 400. What could be the cause of this? Well, if you think about uh, producing shirts and potatoes, and you have a lot of population. Well, if everyone's producing shirts, probably the last few workers that are in that shirt manufactory uh, might be inefficient, not producing that many t-shirts simply because there's not enough machines available for them. However, if you're set up really well to produce potatoes and shirts and you send just a few workers out to produce potatoes, they have access to all the John Deere's, all the big machinery and different things like that. To produce lots of potatoes. So to produce that 20 units of potatoes didn't require many workers or required just those workers that were just hanging around. So you have this situation that there's not a lot of shirts lost. However, when you get towards the end and you want to go from 80 pounds of potatoes to 100 shirts, well then in that situation you're going to have to take a lot of workers away because and now they, they might have to hand pick the potatoes because we're not in the situation where the machinery is readily available anymore. So we're going to have to take away a lot of workers. And these workers could have produced a lot of shirts because now if we fall into a situation where all the workers are producing potatoes, it's a kind of similar idea that if we send a few to make shirts, well, they have access to a lot of machinery. So this kind of situation here that we see that the opportunity cost keeps on going up is a situation that we would say that we have increasing opportunity costs. So if you see a graph that has this kind of shape like this, it's kind of bowed towards the outside.
that's increasing opportunity cost between two goods, let's say X and Y. However, if we had a situation of constant opportunity cost, instead we would have a situation which is a perfectly straight line, perfectly straight. And because it's perfectly straight, we're always giving up to produce 10 more units. We're always giving up the same thing because the slope is constant. The trade-off is constant. So we're going to be using this one more when we deal with trade in the next chapter because it's so much easier to solve. However, in practice, you could think that increasing opportunity costs may be um, found more uh, commonly. On any of these uh, production possibilities frontier, we have to keep in mind a few key points. So a few key points that we have along these production possibilities frontiers is I could say, well, there's this point here, call it point A, there's point, or let's say I'll, I'll give a few points, A, B, and then here C and D, and here E and F, okay? A and B, what's special about A and B? Not adding them, it's just uh, A or B. We're dealing with points that are infeasible, okay? Even though I would like to produce this combination of shirts and potatoes, with the current technologies and the current population size that I have, it is infeasible. If we're dealing with anything on the production possibilities graph, I'm thinking about these points are efficient because I'm not wasting any resources. All workers are working. Whereas E and F, we would say that these points are inefficient or that we are wasting resources. Why can we say that we are wasting resources? Well, it's a situation here that if I look at point E here, I might be producing 500 shirts and 20 potatoes, but with 20 pounds of potatoes, I could increase the amount of shirts produced to 950, or with about 500 shirts, I would be somewhere between these two, I could increase my potato production to 60 or 80. So I'm in inefficient. I'm not producing as much as I could, so I'm wasting resources. So at any point in time, we always want to be along this production possibilities frontier. In the absence of trade, our production possibilities frontier is also our consumption possibilities frontier because all that we can consume is based on all we can produce. We'll see later on with trade that we might be able to consume more. But otherwise, if we were a country on its own on an island, this is what we would be limited as options of consumption. The only way that we could achieve points outside here is if technology or something else improves. Okay. So, as I mentioned, increasing opportunity costs implies that the PPF is not a straight line. We'd have that situation where it's got a shape like this and all combinations of the goods on this PPF are efficient and over time with economic growth some of these infeasible points over here may become feasible because of often increases in technology or simply an increase in the population size may do that as well.